In uh, today's class, we're going to be talking about how to do support and resistance. I'm going to show you how to do it as far as swing trading. And then there's a completely different way that I do it for day trading. Uh, make sure you guys are looking at my screen. But yeah, so let me clean this chart up and I will describe what support and resistance is and how we are going to use it. background and then okay so what is support and resistance if say we were looking at a chart of mcdonald's right and the chart looks something like this you're looking at a line chart it's just going up and down up and down up and down now we've noticed three or four times four times that McDonald's has came up to this area and five times it has came down to this area. Let's say McDonald's down here is at $200. Up here it's at 250. Down here is going to be your support. So support is basically where buyers believe that they're getting a deal on the stock or they believe that the stock is undervalued. Therefore, there is tons of buying pressure that is going to come into the market to drive the price even higher. So every single time McDonald's comes down to $200, this is going to act as a support area because buyers believe this is a good price to get in. Now, if you look at it, every single time it's came down to 200, it goes back to the upside to this $250 area. Now, since McDonald's keeps coming up to this $250 area and then getting sold off this is going to be known as your resistance so resistance is basically where selling pressure comes into the market so the people who are buying it down at 200 might be selling it up here at 250 and also in the market you can sell shares that you do not own like say I wanted to sell a um, hundred shares up at 250 and I didn't own them shares I would be negative 100 shares now, if I sold them at $250 to somebody else who thought McDonald's was going to go higher, well, I'm actually in this scenario going to profit if the stock goes down. So not only are these people who are buying, selling it up here, but you also have what is known as short selling, which is what these people are doing right here. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of uh, short squeezes in the market. Basically, it's people selling shares they don't own and buying it back lower. So if they sold shares at $250 and it dropped all the way down to $200, they're going to profit $50 per share. Let me pull up the general tab real quick. There we go. But yeah, so you got basically double selling pressure that can occur here from people who don't own the stock and people who own it but want to take their profits. So again, support is where the buyers are going to be driving the price of the stock even higher. And then resistance is going to be where sellers are selling off their shares or short selling. Therefore, the stock is more than likely going to drop. Now, in the market, my criteria to finding a support or a resistance point is going to be at least two to three hits. So if we're looking at McDonald's, it comes down to 200, bounces, goes to 250, comes down to 200, bounces, goes to 250. Well, it already did it twice here. Basic trading psychology, what do you think is going to happen the third time it comes down? I'm so terrible at drawing, so bear with me. But what do you think is more than likely going to happen the third time it comes down to 200? People are going to buy it up, right? So, they've seen this pattern occur before. People are buying it at 200. Again, this is support. So, they buy it at support at 200. Well, if they've noticed twice before it's gone from 200 where people buy it to 250 where people sell it, this is going to be their exact same game plan. So what happens? We get in, we buy it at 200, our plan is to sell it at 250. What happens when it sells off at 250 and comes back to this area for a fourth time? Now even more people are going to see this same exact pattern. 
So it's now came down to this area four times and has been bought up. Now you have tons of people sitting here waiting to buy it off at 200 and sell it at 250. So the more times it comes back to this 200 and bounces off as support, and the more times it comes up to this 250 and sells off as resistance, the stronger it becomes because the more people are going to be seeing this pattern. That's just basic trading psychology. Now, it's not just going to sit in this range of 200 and 250 forever. Eventually, it's going to break one way or the other. So, say McDonald's sells off right here, kind of just consolidates right here for a little bit, and then it goes boom, breaks through the 250. How do you know it won't break through support or resistance with hitting it so much? The, uh, the actual candlesticks, bullish candlesticks, bearish candlesticks. But, and plus if it never closed above it. So, let's say it finally breaks through 250. What do you think the people that were buying it here and selling it here want to do now? They want to get back in for the higher move up. So what you are going to experience is 9 times out of 10, resistance will then become support and then it's going to head higher. So these people who were buying it at 200 and selling at 250, they want the move to go even higher to the upside. Again, basic trading psychology. So say it breaks 250 and it's got room to like 350. Well, you definitely want to get in that, but you don't want to pay, you know, 275, 300 bucks. You want to wait for it to come back and get in right here and take it higher. On the flip side, what happens if it breaks below support? Well, all these people who were buying at $200 say they weren't able to sell when it broke below. What they are going to wait for is more than likely for this thing to come back and get as close to possible to where they bought it. And then they're going to sell it off and it's going to go down. So in this case, support, previous support will act as resistance. And that's, you know, the basics of what it is. Again, it's a lot of trading psychology that goes into it. So, any questions about, you know, the quick run through of what support and resistance is? Now I'm going to show you guys how to do it. Good, good. I think so. I think one person question. Maybe a few people have questions. I will let you guys type that out real quick. So candlestick formations determine if it will break. Yeah, so you'll be able to tell through the, the actual candlesticks themselves. Like if they're Say, I'm trying to think of something recently that's broken through a very strong resistance or support. I mean, say Boeing right here. There's a pretty solid resistance, broke above it, became support. Had it up higher, bull flagged, push, bull flag, push. But yeah. So. Let's, um, let me show you how to find these support and resistance areas now. So let's uh let's do it on AMD. Say this is gonna be the first way that I'm gonna show you how to do it is for swing trading. So when you are swing trading and you are setting up your support and resistance areas, first you want to start on the monthly time frame. So I set up the 15 year monthly just because you know AMD I mean it's been around for 15 years, but it's not it's way past from where it opened. However, if we went to something like, you know, Coca-Cola, we can see in the... All right, who, who do I got to snipe? Boom, snipe. Anyways, Coca-Cola's been here in the past. Coca-Cola's a slow mover. Or, you know, even like, I think JP Morgan finally surpassed it. But, you know, JP Morgan, this monthly is going to be beneficial to you. So when I'm swinging, that's why I want to know about the monthly because... Right here, there's a clear resistance. But 
anyways when we are swinging we start on the monthly time frame the reason being these are going to be the strongest support and resistance areas that you want to know about now if you're on thinkorswim go to your settings right here chart settings make sure you're on general and go to snap drawings 2 and put ohlc now when you select ohlc click apply and then okay notice how my support line snaps onto the candlestick that's what we want yeah they're all recorded the last one was recorded also but when we are doing this ideally people have different opinions on how you should do it for swinging however i like to aim for the wicks you are going to find the easiest way to find your support and resistance is by snapping this thing onto your wicks and just looking to the left and right so we're looking at amd boom we got four hits right here one two three four and you can even count this five but ideally i'm trying to hit the most wicks as possible now some swing traders argue that you should draw it on the bodies just because that's how that's where it's closed so there's arguments about that you can play around with both uh personally i prefer to go for the wicks but if we were talking about the bodies for swing trading this would be one right here ohlc but we're going to pay attention to these wicks now my criteria is i only want to hit two to three wicks that's it a minimum of two so we're looking at amd we got four hits right here five if you want to count this and then we got one two and then we get a body three and then we get a body four There's a big difference between wicks and bodies yes the wicks are how high or low the stock went so i want to know how low it went or how high it went the body is just where they closed ohlc it's the same thing makes it so your support and resistance locks onto it but this is going to be it for the monthly now if we're looking at amd and it's all the way up here at 109 I really like yes we can come down here and find support or resistance areas but I really don't care about it because this is all the way down at $35 this is now all the way at 109 it would make zero sense to start coming down here and being like all right here's you know here's one here's one and then you know just have, having this thing all over the place so I only plot my support and resistance to what's actually valid so this is it as far as the monthly now as far as other spots that you do that are just like a default support or resistance 52 week high is going to be an automatic resistance point so that's when we later in these classes when we talk about double tops uh double bottoms triple tops triple bottoms it's those mainly come at the all-time highs or all-time lows so right away this was amd's previous all-time high so at this point we're ignoring everything to the right so everything to the right of this red line we're ignoring this was the all-time high that is a default add-on the 52 week highs is a resistance all-time highs is a resistance all-time lows is a support 52 week lows are support those are defaults yeah i just said that no top or bottom of the top or bottom of the wick that's the only place you draw them again that's how high or how low the stock went it wouldn't make sense to come right here and say okay that's a resistance because it's not see what i'm saying now it's up to you guys if you want to color code these i used to it just it took too long to actually go through and color code them so what you can do if you want to name them so you know which support or resistance it's coming up to because your monthlies are going to be your strongest what you can do is you can click click edit properties go to name type m 
for monthly and then show on the right so now if it comes to it you see an m you're like okay that's monthly or you can just color code it's really up to you but that's and then this all-time high of course but that's it as far as the monthly now on the weekly it's going to be the same thing i want to find support and resistance levels now we can see how these areas act from a better perspective so now we're going to do the same thing we just take our support and resistance line and we just start snapping it on looking to the left and right and boom found one one hit two hit three four five six seven eight nine nine direct hits now start doing it again again i'm only looking for two hits one hit two hit body uh let's see another and another and another start doing it again one hit two hit three hit four hit five hit and we got bodies over here want to know about those yep boom one two three four so i'm going through here and i'm plotting the obvious if you if it takes more than like two to three minutes to find a support or resistance you're probably looking too hard i've also had people have that problem where they end up saying I got like 50 or 60 of these freaking lines on my chart. I can't see anything. If you got that much, then you're probably just looking too hard and charting every single thing. It should probably take you like a total of 30 seconds. Because, again, if you, if you are thinking from a trading psychology standpoint, how many people do you think are actually going to study this thing with a magnifying glass to find every single support or resistance? Not many. They want to find the most obvious because support and resistance it's the most basic form of technical analysis so they just want to go on here and they want to be like all right boom 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 i'm done that's all they want to do so that's exactly what we're going to do so don't don't overthink it too much so now once you're done on the weekly then break it down to the daily you want to find even more areas There. And when we get into our candlestick patterns, that's going to help. But other than that, do not see any other ones on here that like stand out. Mostly being hit. I should think there's one more. Multiple hits there. Couple here, couple here. Boom. That's it. So that's what you're gonna be doing when you are um when you're setting up your support and resistance for swing trades. Monthly, weekly, daily. That's it. Because I mean, I, I know people who do support and resistance on like a one hour when they're doing, you know, swing trades. Personally, I don't care about what's going on with a one hour time frame. One hours are more so for day trades. So monthly, weekly, daily. That's it. Two to three hits. Now, there are certain certain areas where I will plot if it just has one hit right so if we go to something like dish which i just swung recently they did over a hundred percent and we cut the rest on friday at like i think they were at like 70 percent on friday but they hit a little over a hundred percent right here so we're looking at dish right here and 
I mean, there's not really any monthly support or resistance that's blocking it. And we got this little area right here. But other than that, you know, above it, got a long way it could go to all the way up here. So, a stock, right? A stock can only move in one of three ways. An uptrend, which is going to look like this. A downtrend, which is going to look like this. Or consolidation, which is going to look like this. When a stock is downtrending like this, just like Dish is, you guys see how similar this looks to this? Down, up, down, up, down, up. The, once Dish starts coming back up and uptrending, these previous pullbacks are going to act as a resistance. So if there's just one hit right here, which is that pullback, you want to chart it. So both of these will be resistance. Same thing vice versa to the downside. If Dish started coming back down, this is going to act as support here, and this is going to act as support here. You want to draw a support there, and you want to draw a support here. So now, if we go back to Dish on the daily, drop, pullback. I'm aiming for like right here to right here. So could it push a little more to 45.97? Of course it could. Push all the way to 45.78. You think I'm pushing it for like 20 more cents? No. That's called don't be a dick for a tick. But these, these pullbacks are going to act as a resistance point. Drop pullback. You notice. Acted as resistance. So this is exactly how that trend changes. Drop, pullback, drop, pullback, drop. Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. So these pullbacks, you always want to pay attention to them. So now if Dish were to start coming back down, this is going to be a support. This is going to be a support. This is going to be a support. And this is going to be a support. That makes sense to everybody. So like when you get falling wedges, right? Unfortunately, EWJ, I'm a little pissed off about this. I let others get to my trading psychology, which should not have happened. But we're looking at this. This is a price target. This is a price target. And here's a price target. Drop, pull back, drop, pull back, drop. Breakout. Go to something like Amazon. Again, I want to I want to show you guys how that all time high act as acts as resistance. But we're looking at Amazon. Here's that all time high. Ignore everything over here. So what happened when it hit that all-time high? One, two. This is known as your double top. Basically happens when it's at the all-time highs. Stock comes back, hits all-time high, says nope, then it drops. But yeah. So let's do another stock real quick. Let's do damn Amazon actually pretty to all ass. It's on the weekly watch list, free game. This thing breaks. Ooh. Anyways, um, let's do. I'm trying to think of something that has not been at all time highs. Seems like almost everything has. Good God. General Electric. Um, can't do hot. It's at all time highs. 
Okay, so something EA. I'm watching EA. I I like EA a lot for a swing, so there's more free game for you guys. But since I'm going to be looking for swings, I'm gonna start on the monthly time frame. All time high right here. I wanna know about it. 52 week low. If it were to come back down here, I would mark this. But this is really all I see on the monthly. Anything else? Yeah. I, I think it's going to break to the upside, so I'm not really worried about what's going on down here. But you could mark right here, hitting the bodies. And you get a couple wicks. So, you get the monthly out of the way. Weekly. Now, the weekly we want to know about. So, it seems like this area is actually pretty strong. And the other thing, with support and resistance, a lot of people take the levels to like if somebody were to plot a resistance point at 146.72 like I did, don't think that the resistance is going to be exactly at 146.72. In reality, the resistance area is probably something like this. So it probably ranges by like 50 cents. We just want to know where that general area is. A lot of traders could draw this differently. So, there's clear resistance in this area. You can see every time it comes into the area, it rejects it. Then you got... Where's that all-time high? How long ago? Back in 2018. Okay. So now we go to the weekly. This is... This happened. Yeah, this is the 52 week high. So the 52 week high and the all time high, very close. So again, since they're very close, this is going to act as an area of resistance. Therefore, you do not trade EA until it breaks out. We can start coming through here, finding supports. And again, I'm not, I'm not really coming down here. I'm not too worried about you know, possible supports under this area. But this is basically all I want to know about. Then we can fine tune it a little bit through here. Left, maybe. Boom. So you got a decent bit of support and resistance all through here. For that, you go to the daily. So. You know, if it breaks above here, it can more than likely go to here. Break above here, however, this area is going to fly. Then you can find more. Actually, it's basically already all of it's almost all hit. I'm just waiting for it to break. But yeah, that's, you know, how you're going to set it up on your for your swings. Now, day trading is a little different. Say we go to something like Apple. So, for day trading, when we get to the person's pivots, it'll make it a little quicker and easier for your day trading. However, when I do my support and resistance for day trading, I start on the weekly. We haven't gotten to chart patterns yet, but trend line, top breakout but again looking at the weekly here all this 52 week high we're ignoring everything to the right 52 week high and then we're going to come through here this was another previous all-time high so i want to know about that we got a support area it looks like right here we get multiple hits so i want to know about that snap it onto these wicks see what we can get One right there. There. That's it. And one right there. So again, it's it's so easy when you snap onto the wicks. I can't you know stress that enough. Super, super easy. 
Now, once you're done on the weekly for day trades, then go to the daily. So then on the daily, you're going to fine tune everything. Again, the trend lines are up a lot. Get to that. But, so now we're coming through and seeing what we've missed. Got an area right there. So now let's go to recent times. Got this area right here. Left, yep, right there. Three. That all time high. Also, um, whole numbers. I forgot to say that. You want to chart whole numbers. Psychological. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen a stock come up to a whole number, whether it be 100, 150, 10, 20, 30. Those are going to act as psychological support or resistance. The Dow Jones came to 35,000 and rejected 35,000 for like weeks just because it's psychological. In reality, there was no resistance from Fibonacci or person's pivots, nothing psychological. The so same thing with Apple, 150. Um, we were trading this in Team Bull. So if you were in Team Bull and Apple was trying to crack that 150, me and Jadon were like, holy shit. Because the level two was showing how many sellers were at 150. Like they, they literally unloaded shit ton. So whole numbers, if it's near it, again, 200, 300, 400, stuff like that, you want to know about it. Now, when you're trading a bigger company, like Apple, the psychological resistance points will be 150, 200, 250, 300. If you're trading something like HUT, the psychological resistance is going to be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, so on and so forth, like in intervals of 10. You get to something like the Dow, which is at, you know, way, it's above 35,000 now, I believe, but the resistance points for like the S&P futures and stuff like that, it's going to be 4,500. 5,000, 5,500. Dow Jones is going to be 35,000, 30,000, 36,000. Tesla, 700, 750, 800, 850. So it all depends on what you're trading. And if, even if it's penny stocks, $1, $2, $3, $4. So th those are going to be your psychological resistance. But now we go back to Apple. We can see it stopped dead to a T at 150. Um, I'm pretty sure I was at the beach. This happened and I actually traded it. But, um, yeah, so 150. It was, it was a huge resistance. Finally cleared it. Solid closes. Now it's on its way. So these are, it looks like all of the... One more. So now when I'm done marking up the daily, when I'm day trading, I then break it down to the four hour. Just because when we're day trading, we really want to know about where these possible support and resistance points are. So I keep my pre-market on. Some people do, some people don't. I've noticed that the pre-market is a very important level that you want to pay attention to. So there's an area right here, resistance here, resistance here, here, and here. Almost hits it here, here, support, and then, oh wait, what did I mark? Did I mark this one? Yeah, this one. And then it was support over here. See over here, it's resisting this area. Happens to be that 150. Then, get another level right here, which acted as support. So now, just using these four hours to help find more support and resistance levels to fine tune um, price targets. Because that's what our support and resistance is going to be, is our price target. So generally, when I'm doing my four hour support and resistance, I'm really only paying attention to, I would say, the last, I don't know, like, um, 
few weeks, couple months. Now, you know, if you're trading something like snow, which is just kind of in like a gray zone right now, because it's been a long time since it's been here. There's really not much support and resistance you can use. And it's the same thing with Tesla. In this scenario, these pullbacks right here, this pullback and this pullback, that's your main price target. But in these gray areas, I mean, let me show you Tesla. That's Tesla from here it really just shot up. You got here and then you got here. That's basically it. As day traders, we know Tesla's not going all the way from you know, right here all the way up to here. There's going to be areas in between. So that's known as a gray area. You're going to have to come back on your four hour way back here and start finding other areas that you can aim for. That makes sense to everybody, hopefully. But yeah, that's exactly what you're going to do. Now, damn, there's so many setups going into next week. I'm excited. I found like five of them during this class. But yeah, ideally when I'm doing four hours, I'm just paying attention to what's going on over here. Last couple months, few weeks. But yeah, if it's in a gray area, you, you, you have to go back. So now, after I'm done on the four hour, I will finally fine tune it with the one hour. So the one hour will help find the final support and resistance areas. Apple, that happens to be right here. Something else that is kind of in a gray zone would be AMD. So AMD, you know, just ran up insanely in price. Not really any support or resistance that we can start doing up here besides here and here. So go down to the four hour. Okay, inverse head and shoulders. I know some of you don't know what that is. Neckline's going to be roughly right there, so we want to know about that. But I mean, really, other than that, now it's starting to form different support and resistance. But last week, before the market opened, they couldn't really do anything. So we would have to use a one hour. Now the one hour is going to help you fine tune these levels. And then, I mean, the one hour really. What is it? Whatever this time frame is. The last 20 trading days is what I'm paying attention to. I'm not going back weeks, months to find one hour support of resistance. Marking it up. So, that is how I go about my, uh, my day trading support and resistance. Now, there's a couple other things you want to pay attention to when you're day trading. You want to pay attention to the prior day's close, the prior day's high, and the prior day's low, as well as the day before that. So we're looking at AMD. We want to know about the closing of AMD, which was here because I've noticed more times than not, there will be support or resistance on the prior day's close. Because again, if you break it down to trading psychology, well, that moved the market basically are the market makers so the market makers and big money agreed that okay amd is going to close at 109.2 today there's a reason why they agreed there i'm not 109.27 we might not know it but we know where it closed so we want to know about this so sometimes i will mark that i also want to know about the prior day's high what did amd come up and start wicking off of on Friday, prior day's high. Also want to know about prior day's low. What did it start wicking off of? Prior day's low. Day before that, that closed. Also see. Prior day's high, all the way up here, never came to it. But. Th those are some other things that you might want to pay attention to. Now, not saying that you have to do all weekly, daily, four hour, one hour, then add that because then you're going to have a chart that looks like this. That's going to drive you insane. Those, should, those are that last part that I just told you. That's something that you can play with. You don't want something that looks like this. Trust me. Eyes going to go bad. But yeah. 
So you can play around with those. Now, the other thing I pay attention to, and we're going to go further into this when um I teach about day trading as well as Grizzly. I got to ask Grizzly what day he even wants to teach. But he will be teaching a class on day trading and uh, scalping. But another area you do want to know about is that pre-market high. So pre-market high, once it breaks out, it's known as a opening range breakout. But let me see if I can find an example. There. There. Okay, so pre-market highs. I like to time my entries above the pre-market highs for day trading. Here's a pre-market high, so therefore I just mark it, and you can make it different colored so you can differentiate. But say I want to know where that pre-market high is, boom, it broke it, what happened? Flew. Pre-market high, what happened when it finally started to break above it? Flew. High right there. Damn, that thing ran. Year to year. I feel like we traded this because this candle looks very familiar. Definitely feel like we did. Pre market low. What happened when it broke below it? Bearish candlestick. Died. So, pre market highs and lows, they're also very important. Want to pay attention to them. Um, any questions about drawing the support or resistance? One thing I didn't touch on was um the actual candlesticks themselves, so I think we'll go through that for the people who don't know, and then um talk about that trend real quick again, basically higher high, higher low, stuff like that. So as far as plotting. Yeah, so again, when you're swinging, you go on the 15-year monthly. So when you start, you start on the 15-year month. Do your support and resistance. After that, break it down to 13-year weekly. Support resistance. One year, one day, support resistance. That's it when you're swinging. Now, once you're done with, say, your day trading, instead you start on the 13 year weekly, or 13, uh, three year weekly, my bad. 1Y, one 1D, one 180 day, four hour, 20 day, one hour. We'll get to that. We're not even that far yet. It's like five classes ahead. But these are what you're going to be using for your support and resistance area. Those time frames. That answer your question, uh, Magenta. Oh my end. So, um, but yeah, any other questions about the support and resistance? How to plot it? Actually, oh, we can talk about how to trade in between it. So we go back to uh get a clear apple. Okay, good. So say you know we're looking at this and I'm assuming nobody has questions because nobody asked. But we're looking at Apple. Again, I time my entries above that pre-market high. So we go back here. Where's the pre-market high on Apple? Right here. Prior day's close is here. Prior day's high is here. Once it clears here, it's gonna go. No, as long as they, as long as they stay valid, you can use them. If it stays within the ranges, you don't have to redo them every day. It's not like you know they disappear. Does that make sense, sir? But yeah. So again, I'm timing my entries above that pre-market high. Well, if you have a resistance here and then a resistance here, 
more than likely you are not the only person that has the same plan going into this trade apple breaks 148.85 i'm looking to take it to 149.53 and then 150. you get in here boom take profits take profits so using support and resistance we're not the only ones that know where these areas are more than likely millions of other people have the same exact plan that say leave it over here right say there was a resistance here and you wanted to wait for a break above the resistance to take it to 147.84 well unlikely millions of other people have the same exact plan what happens when it breaks above it gives a nice push goes into a bull flag and then it pushes even more goes into another bull flag and then it pushes even more but this is the area that you want to trade in between. You don't want to jump the gun thinking it's going to break. Nine times out of ten, it's not going to. You're going to lose on that. You want to wait for the breakout. Get to level two. Level two is going to help a lot. But this is basically the gray area that you want to fill. This is going to be your trading range. This off limits. This off limits this off limits and this off limits all your resistance points are off limits do not buy until it breaks go buy same thing as support say we want to take baba to the downside say we had let's say we had a support here here here, here, and here. Here's your pre-market low. Therefore, once you start breaking below it, you start taking your puts. All right, you got this area to fill, so you get in. Boom, you take here, take some profits. Break below here, you have this area to fill. Boom, you take more profits. Break below here, you got more room that needs to be filled. Say it was down here. You, know, you got your nice move. Following day, starts breaking below again. What do you do? You trade the spaces in between. Make sense, everybody? Yes, yes. I think Yoda has a question. No, completely different. completely we will, we'll get to gaps gaps are mainly i pay attention to gaps on swings but so that's really how you're going to use your support and resistance next class we're going to talk about the fibonacci and the uh person's pivots which is going to help you fine tune support and resistance as well as um above all-time highs when a stock goes above all-time highs like amd and apple we can't come up here and start saying that oh there's gonna be you no know, resistance uh what's it at 154 if it breaks above 155 we can't say oh resistance 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 pulling those out of your ass at that point so there's other things that you can use like fibonacci which we're going to talk about yes which is going to help you find these levels kind of like se which I deleted. There we go. One three seventy. Yeah, if it if you have a support area that was from four months ago and amd were to come back to it comes back down to it yes it is going to act as support you want to see something you guys want to know why i added las vegas sands where i did yeah your support and resistance is based off of past price action go to the monthly on las vegas sands what do you see 
solid ass support. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Guess where we added the ninth time it came back. Well, things I like to think so myself. <laughs> But yeah, that's why we added where we did. Very strong support. Or like something like ABBA. ABBA got beat to hell. Have to go back to historical data and you have to find these areas. So like somewhere in this range where I'd be looking for it. So, um, the, the other thing about a support or resistance point, long ass wicks, right? I call this the long ass wick method. If we are looking at something, find it. we get a long ass wick like this. Oops. This one. There's a reason why it came down to this area and gave that long ass wick we might not know it but for some reason buyers came in and just drove the price up substantially again we don't know why but the long ass wick method you want to chart this because more than likely in the future it's going to be some type of support or resistance it did I'm trying to think of something else. This is a long ass wick. There we go. That's what you guys can share with your friends. You guys hear the long ass wick method? Boom. Long ass wick method. So yes, when you see these long, long wicks, there's there's a reason why this happened. We just don't know it, but we do know it now. For buyers or sellers, just waiting. Uh, can you go over psychological support resistance for different price? Like you said, Apple one fifty. Yeah, Amazon would be 3500 4000 4500 So the, the higher the price of the stock, the higher the intervals are going to get. The smaller the stock, the tighter the interval. Again, penny stocks. Might even go like 50 cents. 50 cents. A dollar, dollar, 50. Two dollars, 250. Apple, 150, 200, 250, 300. But yeah, um, so that's it for support and resistance. Now, real quick, I want to touch on, you know, the actual candlesticks themselves. I know most of you probably know this, but if you're newer to trading, and I definitely remember some of you telling me that this is like the first bit of information that you're learning about the market. So we're going to talk about that real quick. Uh, basically with a candlestick, what it is, right? So fun fact about these candlesticks on the chart. Chinese started using them a long, long time ago to trade rice. That's how these candlesticks were formed. So, like, say rice was... At, I'm going to visually make this for you. So, a green candle, right? Say they started trading rice in the morning at $20. Down here is $20. So, at... Let's say they started trading their rice at 10 o'clock in the morning. At 10 o'clock in the morning, rice was $20 a bag. However, at 4 o'clock at night, rice was $25 a bag. So since the bag of rice closed $5 higher from where it opened, that is going to be a green candle. So green is representing that the stock or in our scenario, rice, closed higher in price than it opened. So for an actual representation, SQ opened at 248. 
at the end of the day, closed at 272. It closed higher than it opened. Back to our rice example. It opened at 20, closed at 25. Now, sometime throughout the day, say they were selling bags of rice for $16. Try to make it as straight as I can. So they were selling a, sometime throughout the day, 10 o'clock to 5 o'clock. They sold a bag of rice for, what did I just say, $16. That's what this wick is representing. And then sometime throughout the day, their highest price that they sold for a bag of rice was 28 That's what this wick is representing. So what it's telling you is at the beginning of the day of trading rice, a bag of rice was going for $20. Sometime throughout the day, they sold a bag of rice for 16. Sometime throughout the day, they sold a bag of rice for, I forget what I just said for the number, 28. But ultimately at the end of the day, the last bag sold of rice was $25. And then the market closed. That's what the candle is telling you. So again, this is where it opened. Sometime throughout the day it went as low as here. Sometime throughout the day it went as high as here. Ultimately, at the end of the day, it closed right here. It closed higher than it opened. You also got your red candle. So, red candle. This is telling you that the stock, or in our case, rice, closed lower than where it opened. So let's say today. Price opened at $20 a bag. 10 o'clock, it opened here. Sometime throughout the day, they sold a bag for as high as, let's say, 30 Way up here. Sometime throughout the day, they sold a bag for as low as 10 What did I say it opened at? 20 So, at close of selling their rice, Closed at 15. So it opened at 20. Sometime throughout the day they sold at 30. Sometime throughout the day they sold at 10. But at the end of the day, the very last bag was 15. That's what the red is telling you. So in an SQ example, 9:30 a.m. It opened right here at 280. Sometime throughout the day went as high as 283.59. Sometime throughout the day went as low as 272.64, but at the end of the day, it closed at 273.08. That's what they're telling you. Now, you can also look at these on different time frames. So each candlestick is going to represent whatever time frame you have selected. This is letting us know on an hourly basis. 10.30 or 10. Apple opened here, sometime from 10 to 11 when as low as here, sometime, sometime throughout 10 to 11 when as high as here, but at 11 it closed here. 30 minute, same thing, just based off of a 30 minute interval. Even You can even do a one minute. I know some of you guys who be watching like 30 minute, or not 30 minute, 30 second time frames, which more power to you. No, no, no. Yeah, it's just candlestick is letting you know what's going on in that specific time frame. You can even look at it on the monthly. Sometime throughout, I don't know, January. Yeah, January. SQ at the beginning of the month opened at 222.5. Sometime throughout the month, highs 246.50. Sometime throughout the month, as low as 197.7. At the end of the month, 31st, closed at 2, 2.13.96. But yes, that is what it is telling you. Regular candlestick, because first off, I don't know, I don't even know how to pronounce that second one. And I have no clue what it is. Ain't even that far yet, Magenta. It's all good. Forgive me. You're the homie. 
basic logic is if the stock closes about above the close it's green and yes vice versa but some people don't know what the wicks mean that's why i wanted to point that out the wicks are very important because the wicks tell you the psychological aspect about you know what's going on so when we get to, when we actually talk about like candlesticks and we see something like this like this by the way here oh anyways any uh so we're looking at sq right we got our pre-market high that we want to know about sq opened here and flew all the way up here can somebody tell me what this candlestick is telling you Yeah, so who's in control? Yeah, you can tell that just by the candlestick. Yeah, so at one point, this was a solid green candle. This looked bullish as hell. And sellers drove the price all the way back down to here. You don't want to be buying calls here. What happened shortly after? SQ. So these candlesticks are super, super important. Let's you know who is in control. Here. Same damn thing. Going to Boeing. We took a Boeing day trade. I see the candle. I would definitely for it. But when we get to the day trading. while it pop up oh right here perfect what's this telling you the wick the wick will tell you any story about the tr the traders that are involved what is this wick telling you yeah buyers this was a solid red candle at one point. The buyer said, nope. Drove the price off. You're in Team Bull. We traded this. I don't know if you remember it, but this is the exact trade. Straight buyers. Boom. Yeah, those wicks. Very important to pay attention. Even the higher the time frame, those wicks over here, same thing. Sometime throughout the day, it was solid green. Seller said, nope. The common reversal pattern when we get to that. Whatever. Type them in the general chat. Are you in here? There's something called general. If you're if you're in the voice call, go in general in the text channels. But yeah, um, Wix. I'm telling you, if you guys take like 30 minutes today after class and just go back and look at the Wix, no indicators, nothing on your chart, you're gonna notice. No, just because it hits a support doesn't mean buy calls. Just because it hits re resistance doesn't mean buy puts either. There's other things that you need to take into consideration. Many other things to take into consideration. Because you might find a support area that nobody else found. And you buy a call off of it. What happens there? The indicators is what helps you determine the trend. Moving averages, squeeze, OBV, 
stuff like that. The actual candlestick itself, that's your price action. Yeah, I'm going to be making a, yeah, I'm going to make it now. A homework channel. Basically, your guys' homework between now and the next class is going to be, you know, plot your support and resistance on two to three charts. Do one for swing trading, so monthly, weekly, daily. And then do one for day trading. So when I, we're, again, we're going to talk about this once we talk more about swing trading. But when I swing trade, I don't swing shit like Amazon, Facebook, Tesla. It's just not my thing to do. So take like Facebook and Tesla and do your day trading levels, weekly, daily, four hour, one hour. And then do something like Oracle and Abibuy for monthly, weekly, daily for swings and post it in the, uh, the homework. Um, Kelly, as far as support and resistance, when you say break above or break below, does the candlestick have to close above or level? Ideally, yes. So if you find like Boeing right here, first off, it's bear flagging. Second off, it's got this solid support that it's just, it's chilling in. So what we are waiting for and Boeing is if oh, this terrible bear flag. you get the but what we are waiting for is for this thing to break below the support so a daily close below 216.85 should send it even lower but at least here and then here so when I'm swinging I that's why I post my swings near the end of the day because you got to wait for the confirmation the dish that we took i i had to wait till like the last 30 seconds we haven't talked about trend lines yet but I, this is why to wait so it's ideally at the end of the day i've just noticed more times than not if i don't wait till the end of the day for the confirmation it tends to pull back some sometime throughout the day because if you put a swing on at let's say 11 o'clock i'm eastern time you still got five hours until the market closes so much can happen in five hours now day trading we can use other things like level two smaller time frames five minute and ten or five minute one minute to help like really time our entries but ideally yes you want to wait for a break above and hold but also using volume in level two for day trade. Oh uh, yeah, you put all your stuff in the um the homework channel and then understanding Yeah, so you know pay attention to your candlesticks. The wicks are always going to tell you a story, who's in control, the actual candlestick itself, then we'll get to the fun stuff like hanging man's um Gravestone dojis, I can fly dojis, low close dojis, stuff like that. Uh, the other thing, like I said, was just like the trend of a stock. So the higher the time frame, the more that trend is intact, if that makes sense. That's why you always want to know a general understanding of what's going on on the monthly because the monthly is superior to everything else. You see a monthly pattern like a monthly bull flag, that's way more superior than a one minute bull flag. So we're looking at Coca-Cola again, going back to the trend. Lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. You guys see it on the actual candlesticks itself? Low, high, low, high. And we can go all day but this trend stays intact until it fails to set a lower low it did right here every time it pulled down lower low lower high lower low lower high lower low it just did it every time made a new low 
till here failed to set a lower low what happened shortly after higher high past this one again this will act as a resistance this will act as a resistance which actually became support this will act as a resistance this will act as a resistance this will act as a resistance now go back to this downtrend able to set lower low then it set a lower high came down set an equal low and then there she went and it stays act all time Think this COVID. Now we're here. So yeah, you just saw both of the trends. It's just setting lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. You want to find sells, puts, higher highs, higher lows, one buys, calls. Now when we talk about Fibonacci next class Tuesday. There's a way to figure out where this thing is going to pull back to. Boom. Bingo. So, that's going to be for next class. Ah, there you are, Steven. I'm assuming you got a question. But yes, a trend is your friend. Never trade against a trend. That's where I see people lose the most money. And also. <laughs> yeah, we could do a one on one how to type messages. <laughs> um, but look. Right, so. Classes are all the way down here. If you scroll all the way down, it says classes. I'm going to label them the date and what, what we went over. Every class is going to be down here. Exactly. Um, But I'm trying to think if there's anything else I would want to say in this class. I don't want to overwhelm you guys yet. Still taking baby steps. Um, I guess you know what questions you guys got for me. I hate Neil. Love you too, Mo. Huh. Yeah, screw Neo. Grizzly knows. PayPal, that's on watch next week. Harmonic patterns, what do you mean? Gordon. 